Hi, so lots of people have been asking me if I could give it a go making a solar reflector. So what I've got is a bicycle wheel without any spokes, because I had that lying around and that's something you can come across really easily. Now remember I do have those big wheels from the hamster uh, run around that we did and if this works I may make a massive one from the hamster generator. Anyway, I've got my bicycle wheel. I've got myself a space blanket, which is aluminium covered mylar, then a bit of super glue and a bit of gorilla tape. Step one, tape the mylar down to the desktop. So I started in the corners, put one corner on, pulled the other corner, went around, and then I put tape in the centre, pulled it, then tape here. Surprisingly worked well, that's pretty shiny. So step two, take your bicycle wheel and put some glue around it, all the way around here. I'm going to use super glue. When we've glued it, we drop it onto there and wait for it to dry. Well, that worked surprisingly well. Now we're going to stretch this into a parabola. Now, parabolas are found everywhere actually. If you throw a ball in the air, that follows a, para a parabolic path. A jet of water will follow a parabola. So they're all over the place. But in order to make a parabola, what we need to do is stretch this material. And the question is, how far do we stretch it? Because the light will hit it, be bounced off, and come to some focal point. So where is that focal point, and how much do we need to stretch that? Well, unfortunately, we need a little bit of math to understand that. So let's have a look at the math. Now, I've drawn a parabola. Let's say it's 12 metres across and 2 metres deep. The question is, where's the focus? Now, the light will come in and obviously be reflected from whatever angle is there back out again. And that point where it gets reflected to, and they all get reflected to that same point, is the focal point. And we need to know that. So let's say we make a graph out of this. And we put that as our origin. Then because it's 12 metres across, obviously, there's going to be 6 metres and there's going to be 2 metres, so that point is 6, 2. <laughs> this is our Cartesian geometry. Now you don't really re need to remember this, I'm just showing you um, so that you can use this as a guide. But if you imagine that's the parabola that we've got drawn on a Cartesian set, we can choose the point. Now, related to the um, equation of the parabola, we know x squared equals 4py. If we plug in our x, which is 6, divide by 4 on both sides, then we get 8 equals py, where p is the point of focus and y is this distance here, how deep it is. Now we know this distance on this example, it's 2. So in this case, the point, uh, focal point will be at 4 metres. It will be here, because we just plug 2 into there, divide both sides, 4 equals p. Now, we don't necessarily know how deep we need to make it and where that focal point is going to be. So we've stopped right there. Just to rework that a little bit, there's our parabola, and we have a radius here. And it has a depth here. What you need is that the radius squared is equal 4 times the focal point times the depth. In our case, with that uh, bicycle wheel, it's 205.92 centimetres equals FD. So if I make the depth, this depth here, 10 centimetres, and I can divide both sides by 10, and I get 20.592 is equal to the focal point, just by dividing both by 10. But, because you don't know which you're going to be, you can make some decision. 10 centimetres like that, 20 centimetres like that, maybe that's a bit near. If I want four centimetre, uh, 40 centimetres like that, I only need to bend that 5 centimetres. So there are a whole host of methods of forming that parabolic shape. If you want to make a parabola, a true parabola, then you're going to be drawing parabolic <laughs> curves. You need to draw those curves on something that you can create a structure from that you can force your reflective material into. Now that is a bit of a pain. But if you want to do it, then it's one of the methods that you see, and you see YouTube videos on that. The other one is to start with a flat sheet that's circular, cut some sections in it, and 
fold it up, that will make a, an approximation to a parabola, and you see people using that method as well, and some of the cheaper solar cookers are made that way. And Nighthawk in Light did a really nice one where he used a mylar blanket and he forced some air in with an air pump, and it made a dome. Now that dome is going to approximate a parabola, but then so are flat sheets. And a parabolic approximation is usually good enough to do what we want to do with it. So we need to draw some parabolas, and I can feel people groaning already, but the only thing you need to draw a parabola with is this, a flashlight. Because a parabola is something known as a conic section. Hyperbolas, parabolas, ellipses and circles are all sections of cones, and the thing about this is it creates a cone of light. So if I turn my flashlight on and point it, not flashing, there we go, point it straight onto that board, you can see it's a circle. As I bend it, it becomes an ellipse. If I go right the way around like that, it becomes a parabola, and then further around like that, it becomes a hyperbola. So we can create a parabola really easily just using a flashlight. So my bit of board, I've got the center there, which is going to be the center of my wheel. This is the distance across the wheel. Here's the edge of the wheel. I don't know how far down I want to go, so let's say five centimeters, about there. I shine my torch on, making sure that the beam of light just touches here, here, and the bottom here, and that will create a perfect parabola. Now, it's a bit challenging to do by yourself, but you can do it if you use a stand for your flashlight and fix this, or if you happen to have a willing helper who doesn't know any better and you promise him chocolate afterwards, use the willing helper. Luke! <laughs> want some chocolate, mate? <laughs> <It's not> doing, <laughs> mate. <laughs> so I use that technique to cut our perfect now, parabola. Oh, I pointed out there's lots of ways to make this. We're going to use Nighthawk's method because it's pretty easy. But instead of um, getting a great big piece of plastic, what I've done is taken a sheet of rubber and glued a tyre valve to it because a tyre valve will fit straight onto my pump. And so what I'm going to do is exactly what he did. Lay it on there, clamp it down so we get a seal, and then I'm going to put some fiberglass on there. Okay, so there it is. There is our parabolic mirror. That's gold back and mirrored front. That's awesome, actually. Of course, we've got to burn something in the sun with it, so let's take it outside. Incidentally, remember all that stuff I did about focal length? Well, this is about 100 centimeters deep, so the focal length is going to be about 20 centimeters from the bottom, which is about there ish. So we know where the focal length is going to be. That is so bright, it's actually difficult to look at. There, look at that. Wow. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Okay, so I've got some spot in front of my eyes. I came back in by feel. Anyway, obviously I'm not going to be using this to burn things particularly. What I want to do is uh, hang a um, either a stirring engine or a steam boiler right there. Now, if you remember, uh, MIT did that stuff where they added copper nanoparticles to water and created a flash steam boiler that they could then run a steam engine on. Of course, that's what I'm interested in. So I thought I'd go through how to make the parabolic mirror. Uh, exactly where those focal lengths are, the different kinds of ways of making them, and then I thought I'd use Nighthawk method, which was really simple, and we made a pretty nice mirror using a bicycle wheel that's good and sturdy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.